नमस्कार स्टूडेंट्स होप यू आर हेल एंड हार्टी टेकिंग केयर ऑफ योर हेल्थ एंड योर स्टडीज माई नेम इज ज्योत्सना एंड आई एम फ्रॉम एजुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट चंडीगढ़ इंडियन कल्चर इज नोन टू द वर्ल्ड फॉर बींग रिच एंड वेर इट हिंदुइजम इज सेट टू बी द ओल्डेस्ट रिलीजन एवर बट दिस इज ऑल्सो अ फैक्ट that there had been evolution of various thoughts various sects to indian cultural system be it buddhism or jainism that's what we are going to do today chapter number 6 from grade 6 book our past part 1 the name of the chapter is new questions and ideas so without wasting any time let's start this session From chapter 5 you know that some kings in Mahajan Pad were growing more powerful new cities were developing and life was changing in the villages some thinkers were trying to understand these changes in society they also wanted to try and find out for true meaning of life during this period buddha and mahavir attained enlightenment and spread their knowledge and learning about the real meaning of life to common people let's first take up the story of buddha about 2500 years ago siddhart the founder of buddhism was born he was also known as gautam buddha the buddha belonged to a small gan known as sakya gan and he was a kshatriya When he was a young man he left the comforts of his home in search of knowledge he meditated for days on end under a peepal tree at Bodh Gaya in Bihar where he attained enlightenment after that he was known as Buddha or the wise man he then went to Sarnath near Varanasi where he taught for the first time He spent the rest of his life traveling on foot going from place to place teaching people till he passed away at Kushinara Buddha teaching The Buddha taught that life is full of suffering and unhappiness even if we get what we want we are not satisfied and want even more The Buddha described this as thirst or tanha he taught that this constant craving could be removed by following moderation in everything he also taught people to be kind and to respect the lives of others including animals he believed that the results of our actions called karma whether good or bad affect us both in this life and the next Talking about Upanishads in this context the sang is the third of the three refuges in Buddhism as for recognizable current life forms the interpretation of what is the jewel depends on how a school defines sang for example for many schools monastic life is considered to provide the safest and most suitable environment for advancing towards enlightenment and liberation due to the temptations of life in the world in buddhism gautam buddha the dharma and the sangha each are described as having certain characteristics these characteristics are chanted either on a daily basis or on uposatha days depending on the school of buddhism in Here Vara tradition they are part of daily chanting the sang the sang of the blessed one's disciple sevakas is practicing the good way practicing the upright way practicing the knowledgeable or logical way practicing the proper way that is the four pairs of persons the eight types of individuals this sang of the blessed one's disciple is worthy of gifts worthy of hospitality worthy of offerings worthy of 
Upanishads mean approaching and sitting near. The texts contained in Upanishads were the conversations between teachers and students. Most Upanishadic thinkers were men, especially Brahmins and Rajas. There is a mention of women thinkers such as Gargi, who was famous for her learning and participated in debates held in royal courts. Many of the ideas of Upanishads were later developed by the famous thinker Shankaracharya. Jainism The last and 24th Tirthakara of Jainas was Vardhaman Mahavira. He was a Kshatriya prince. A group of that was part of the Vajji Sangha. At the age of 30, he left home and went to live in a forest. For 12 years, he led a hard and lonely life at the end of which he attained enlightenment. He taught a simple doctrine, men and women who wished to know the truth must leave their homes. They must follow very strictly the rules of Ahimsa, which means not hurting or killing living beings. Followers of Mahavir, who were known as Jainas, had to lead very simple lives. They had to be absolutely honest and were specially asked not to steal. Also, they had to observe celibacy and men had to give up everything including their clothes. It was very difficult for most men and women to follow these strict rules. Jainism was supported mainly by traders. The teachings of Mahavira and his followers were transmitted orally for several centuries. Now let's talk about the Sangha. Sangha was an association of those people who left their homes. The rules made by the Buddhist Sangha were written down in a book called the Vinaya Pitaka. Men and women who joined the Sangha led simple lives. They meditated for most of the time and went to cities and villages to beg for food during fixed hours. That is why they were known as bhikkhus, the Prakrit word for renouncer or a beggar. Those who joined the Sangha included Brahmins, Kshatriya, merchants, laborers, barbers, courtesans and slaves. The Sangha is the third of the three refuges in Buddhism. Common overall school is that the Arya Sangha is the foremost form of the third rule. As for cognizable current life forms, the interpretation of what is the jewel depends on how a school defines it. So let's take up the monasteries now. A monastery is a building or complex of buildings comprising the domestic quarters and workplaces of monastics, monks or nuns, whether living in communities or alone as hermits. A monastery generally includes a place reserved for prayer, which may be chapel, church or temple, and may also serve as an oratory or in the case of communities, anything from a single building housing, only one senior and two or three junior monks or nuns, to vast complexes and estates housing tens or hundreds. Buddhism and Jainism are two ancient Indian religions that developed in Magdha, Bihar and continue to thrive in modern age. The comparative study of Mahavir and Gautam Buddha are generally accepted as contemporaries. Jainism and Buddhism share many features, terminology and ethical principles but emphasize them differently. Both are Sarmana ascetic traditions that believe it is possible to attain liberation from cycle of rebirth and death, samsar, through spiritual and ethical disciplines. They differ in some core doctrines such as those on aestheticism, middle way versus anakantavada, and self versus no self. Both Jains and Buddhist monks went from place to place throughout the year teaching people, the only time they stayed in one place was during the rainy season when it was very difficult to travel. Then their supporters built temporary shelters for them in gardens or they lived in natural caves in hilly areas.
The permanent shelters which monasteries were built were known as vihar. The earliest vihars were made of wood and then of brick. Some were even in caves, especially in Western India. So let's have a comparison chart of Buddhism and Jainism. Starting with the practices, Buddhism believed in meditation, the eightfold path, right view, right aspiration, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. On the other hand, Jainism believed in five vows of truth, non-violence, non-stealing, non-attachment, control over desires and senses, greater emphasis on non-violence and truth. Also follow three jewels of right perception, right knowledge and right conduct. Place of origin. For Buddhism, it was Indian subcontinent. For Jainism, it was India. Belief of God. The idea of an omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent creator is rejected by Buddhists. The Buddha himself refuted the theistic argument that the universe was created by a self-conscious personal God. Janis also does not believe in a creator called God. Use of statues and pictures Common Statues are used as meditation object and revered as they reflect the qualities of Buddha. And this is a common thing between Buddhism and Jainism. What was their view on life after death? Rebirth is one of the central belief of Buddhism. We are in an endless cycle of birth, death and rebirth which can only be broken by attaining Nirvana. Attaining Nirvana is the only way to escape suffering permanently. On the other hand, Jainis believe that until liberation is achieved, circle of rebirth and death continue due to karma via incarnation in any life form on earth as also heavenly and hellish life forms. The founder was Gautam Buddha, the prince Siddharth. For Jainis, it was Rishabh Dev, first Tirthankar in this era, further revived by Vardhama, Mahavir, 24th and final Tirthkar of this era, clergy. Talking about clergy, Buddhists believe that the Buddhist Sangha composed of bhikkhus and bhikkhunis. The Sangha is supported by lay Buddhists. Jainis, on the other hand, had monks and nuns somehow the similar pattern of Buddhist, literal meaning Buddhist, are those who follow the teachings of Buddha, Jainis. On the other hand, to become a jina, liberated soul, by following the teachings of 24 Tirthankars, human nature. For Buddhist, ignorance as all sentient beings. In the Buddhist text, it is seen that when Gautam, after his awakening, was asked whether he was normal, human being, he replied, no. On the other hand, human suffering is due to negative effects of bad karma and excessive attachment to material aspects of world. The goal of religion for Buddhists was to attain enlightenment and be released from the cycle of rebirth and death, thus attaining nirvana. Jainis had to gain liberation and be released from cycle of rebirth, adopt a path of non-violence towards all living beings. Status of women In Buddhism, there was no distinction between men and women. Women are equal to men and men are equal to women in Sangha. The Buddha gave men and women equal rights and a major part in the Sangha. In Jainis as well, women can become nuns. Talking about marriage, in Buddhists, it is not a religious duty to marry. Monks and nuns do not marry and are celibate. Advice in the discourses on how to maintain a happy and harmonious marriage. Marriage is a social convention and not linked to religion. That's what Jainis believed. But followers must strictly follow monogamy. Monks, though, have renounced material world, hence strictly follow celibacy, somewhat similar like Buddhists. 
the symbols associated with buddhism were the conch the endless knot fish lotus parasol was dharma chakra and victory bell with the jainis it was swastika which is used long before it became as a symbol for anti sentimentalism buddhist and their compatibility with the science aside from the concept of karma and rebirth buddhist is said to be compatible with many scientific findings most buddhist practices are also labeled as cognitive science jain is on the other side the teachings of buddh come from mahavira therefore they are similar let's try to analyze what we have learned today On your screens you can find a question or a statement followed by it are four options you have to pick the correct option so let's get going So my first question is Buddhism was found by Mahavira Zoroaster Ramakrishna Paramahansa or none of these Correct answer is none of these Actually Buddhism was found by Gautam Buddha Moving on, Jainism was founded by Mahavir, Buddha, Zoroaster, or Tao. It is option A, Mahavir. Very good. The Vinayak Pitaka is a sacred text of the Buddhist, the Jainas, the Hindus, or the Sikhs. The correct answer is. The Vinayak Pitaka is a sacred text of the Buddhist. Very good. Buddh used dash to communicate with people. Prakrit, Sanskrit, Urdu or Hindi. Correct option is Prakrit. The universal soul has been referred to as Atman, Brahman, karm or tanha it is option b brahman a woman upanishadic thinker was jabali satyakam jabala urmila or gargi yes a woman upanishadic thinker was gargi so let's fill the blanks which are there on your screens The Buddha belonged to a small gun called Sakya. The Buddha got enlightened at Bodh Gaya. The Buddha used the word tanha for desire of worldly things. Satyakam Jabala was the son of a slave woman called Jabali. The Prakrit spoken in Magadh was known as Magdi Jainism was initially supported by only the traders The teaching of Mahavira were written down for the first time about 10 years ago in 1500 Last question the earliest viharas were made of wood and of brick As Indians we are always proud of the diversity we belong to and the unity we keep. I hope today's session brought you a lot more closer to the rich and varied heritage of our country. We'll be back with many more videos till then stay safe stay healthy and keep studying. Namaskar.